Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Introduced by the Soviet Union back in 1977, the Mil Mi-26 is one of the largest and most powerful helicopter ever built. Despite its age, many remain in service around the world, such as here in Belarus. In Belarus, the Ministry of Emergency Situations focuses mainly on civil protection and crisis response. The Mi-26 boasts a cargo capacity of up to 20 metric tons which makes it an excellent emergency rescue vehicle. The 15-meter long, 3.2-meter wide hold can carry troops, rescue vehicles, and water for aerial firefighting. Sergei has seen the benefits of this massive aircraft firsthand. The helicopter measures more than 40 meters long and boasts a rotor diameter of 32 meters. Да, 32 метра здесь размах несущего винта, 32 метра размах лопасти. Диаметр, будем так говорить. Диаметр несущего винта 32 метра. Ну и вся длина 56. Ну, то есть так довольно-таки, не, вру, 32. Вот, довольно-таки такая крупная машина. Вот. Так что, да, вот, в этом тоже такая уникальность у нее. Over the years, the MI-26 has been instrumental in delivering disaster relief, medical supplies and military personnel. Unlike many other helicopters, the cockpit is quite large, with seating for every crew member in one area. Situated at the very front of the fuselage, the cockpit affords pilots a panoramic view, which is critical to operating such a large aircraft. Inside, Many of the instruments date back to the helicopter's original production. Others have been upgraded to allow for improved performance and integration with modern technology. This is in addition to many other upgrades made by the ministry. As with all aircraft, regular maintenance is essential. This is especially true of the various systems used in heavy lifting operations, which require rigorous maintenance to perform at their peak. Sergei is one of the MI-26 maintainers and has come to know these machines inside and out. From structural integrity inspections to fluid level checks, Maintaining an MI-26 is a constant process. Due to the Soviet design and age, replacement parts can be nearly impossible to come by. However, both Sergei and the helicopter pilot know that consistency can help these helicopters keep flying for years to come. Вертолет очень дорогой. В производстве, в выполнении работ он требует невероятных финансовых затрат. Но в то же самое время он довольно прибыльный. Если мы говорим о работе на этом вертолете, то это, конечно же, будет прибыль. Ну, в определенных там часах наработки. 
Вот. Вертолет уникален тем, что это единственный в мире такой грузоподъемный вертолет. Он может поднять 20 тонн, что на внешней подвеске, что внутри грузовой кабины. Пока это еще не может сделать ни один вертолет в мире. During routine maintenance, special attention is paid to the MI-26's massive rotor system. Maintainers like Sergei need to check for both proper alignment and wear and tear, which can dramatically affect the aircraft's performance. The MI-26 is also equipped with two powerful D-136 turboshaft engines, producing 11,400 horsepower each. These complex systems must be carefully monitored for debris and internal and external erosion. Ultimately, keeping a giant like this in the air requires constant vigilance from highly trained teams. Like maintenance teams, MI-26 flight crews require extensive training in operating a helicopter of this size, given its incredible carrying capacity. Given its size, Takeoff requires careful monitoring of rotor pitch, torque, and power output. Once in the air, the MI-26 can reach speeds of up to 295 kilometers per hour and fly at altitudes of more than 4,000 meters. The Belarus Ministry of Emergency Situations currently employs several MI-26s, as well as MI-8 models for firefighting purposes. While the aircraft's massive size is a benefit when it comes to firefighting, crews are upfront about the challenges that come with flying such a huge machine. As with takeoff, Flight and navigation are team efforts. Given the aircraft size, landing can be another challenge. However, both flight and ground crews train regularly to ensure maximum safety. For some helicopters, the size must take a back seat to ingenuity. A prime example is the Kamov KA-26, which is easily recognized due to its coaxial rotor system. This is where two rotors are mounted one above the other on concentric shafts, where they rotate in opposite directions. This offers benefits like greater lift and payload capacity as well as improved hovering and maneuverability. Maurice Lepoyan is a KA-26 pilot in Romania, where he mainly uses the helicopter for agricultural purposes. Kamov, it's, uh, it's great to fly because it's very flexible, you can do a lot of moves uh, with it. It's very, it is a very strong uh, helicopter, it's not a speed helicopter, but it's made especially for, uh, for, for oper different operations, like agricultural work. It's the perfect helicopter for agriculture. According to him, the aircraft's minimalist open design makes it easy to access and modify for virtually any mission.
Inspections of important components like the rotors and engines are typically performed both before and after each operation. Each of the nine-cylinder radial piston engines is able to produce around 325.2 horsepower. Inside, the control panels are quite simple, having remained mostly unchanged since the helicopter's introduction. However, as Maurice discovered, even getting qualified to operate the helicopter can be extremely difficult. But in the same time, you cannot do the pilot schooling directly on Kamov because uh, it's a historical uh, uh, helicopter and it's not allowed to, to do the school directly on it. So I, I, uh, I went to Bucharest, I made the school on Robinson 22. And uh, after I took my, my PPL, private pilot license uh, degree, then I came back uh, into Timisoara and uh, with, my, uh, with the Kamov instructors, I uh, started uh, to take lessons with the uh, Kamovo. Most privately owned KA-26 models are used for aerial spraying or crop dusting and feature a large tank and dispersal system. With the ability to hover and fly safely at low altitudes, operators can ensure proper coverage of large areas. The startup procedure involves priming the engines, a manual process that used to be far more common in helicopter designs. With that finished, the pilot can engage the dual rotor system. The design for these particular engines dates back to the 1940s, and they are more akin to a car engine than an aircraft engine. This has the benefit of simplifying maintenance for operators who might not have access to a professionally trained crew. The KA-26 has a top speed of just 170 kilometers per hour, but will rarely exceed 115 kilometers per hour during agricultural operations. According to pilots like Maurice, the KA-26 has the added benefit of being easy and fun to fly. While the KA-26 is undoubtedly very recognizable, it pales in comparison to the Command K-Max, which first entered service in 1991. Designed and produced by an American manufacturer, Command Aircraft, the K-Max features intermeshing rotors, which offers several benefits to a heavy lifting copter like this. Among the most notable of these are increased lift and enhanced stability. Because the rotors operate at an angle to one another, they help to balance the helicopter, especially when it's carrying heavy loads. This is specifically what the K-Max was designed to do. Though capacity estimates range, K-Max models have lifted external loads of up to 2,700 kilograms during testing. Unlike the MI-26 and KA-26, the K-Max is a contemporary, American-made helicopter design. Though it doesn't need the constant upkeep of its decades-old counterparts, it still requires regular maintenance. As with all helicopters, the K-Max has a number of required pre-flight checks including inspections of rotor alignment, control systems, and fluid levels. Synchronization of the two rotors is especially important, as the failure of the two to act in tandem can lead to significant performance issues. One of the most interesting aspects of the K-Max is its capacity for unmanned operations. 
Thanks to state-of-the-art onboard systems, the helicopter has already been used by U.S. Marines to deliver supplies in combat zones without requiring onboard pilots. In 2014, an unmanned K-Max was successfully able to deliver 14,000 kilograms of cargo in one day over the course of six missions. This included operating at night, when visibility would have been far too low for a human pilot. While helicopters have the benefit of being able to hover and fly vertically, planes are better equipped for speed. This makes them ideal for emergency situations such as wildfires. One of the most innovative weapons in the war against wildfires in the United States is MAFs, which stands for Modular Airborne Firefighting System. The MAFs were specifically developed to provide additional aerial firefighting capabilities during wildfire seasons when civilian firefighter aircraft are insufficient. It consists of a 3,000-gallon tank and nozzle system, which can be loaded into the cargo hold of a C-130 Hercules, one of the U.S. military's most versatile aircraft. The tank contains either water or a special fire retardant mixture and is attached to a compressor system to allow for easy dispersal via a nozzle in the rear. The system is fully mobile and small enough that a squad of ground crew members can load it into the C-130 in a matter of minutes. Since its introduction in 2007, the MAFs and the recently upgraded MAFs II have seen extensive use against wildfires across the United States. Though operated by the U.S. military, MAFs units coordinate closely with the U.S. Forest Service to bolster firefighting capabilities. This has proven essential in years boasting particularly bad seasons, such as 2007 in California and 2013 in Colorado. During the 2022 wildfires in New Mexico and Arizona, MAFS units were able to drop water along ridges and steep terrains, strategic locations that ground crews simply could not access. There's no denying that the MAFS-2 system has been a game changer in aerial firefighting in the U.S. allowing military aircraft to provide critical surge capacity during extreme wildfire seasons. However, units operating the system require rigorous training and certification. to ensure that both air crews and ground support teams can perform safe and effective aerial firefighting missions. This includes live fire exercises and joint weather training. And all crews must recertify each year. Nevertheless, it goes to show how the right aircraft can make all the difference in the right situation. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.